Hi guys, welcome to the new video of the tutorial series. And in the last video, we discussed about the RPM. Basically, RPM is a tool or the command that you can solve or remove the software, manage the software. Basically, it's for package management. So, the updated version of RPM we have is YUM. In the last video, we also discussed some basic difference. Okay. Now, we will discuss that in the very detail here. But yeah, YUM is again a package manager of Red Hat. Okay. <clears throat> now, what is the difference between RPM and YUM? First, discuss that. So, YUM. The basic very important uh, like difference is RPM will automatically install your dependency dependencies of what dependencies of software okay RPM we have to install it manually so in the last video we saw that we are installing a software called stdpd and this software is nothing but a package of files or the bundle of files so it's also called a package and this software have dependent on another software or another package so those another software or another packages we have installed it manually but that is not in the case of yum if i show you very quickly the last thing again if i try to install with rpm if you want a dedicated video of rpm you want to see the last video is of only the rpm you can watch out on my channel but yeah see it failed and uh, the software is not installed how we can verify like this but now today we will see how we can do it with the yum without installing them manually but you need to understand one thing that yum is a package manager okay now what does it mean by package manager we can install a software we can remove the softwares we can update or upgrade the softwares okay we can search the softwares multiple things but the main thing in the yum you need to understand is yum dependent on some repository yum is dependent of repository now what is the repository okay so repository is nothing but you can think of just a very general place maybe in your local maybe on somewhere on network a very general place to store your packages okay now what does it mean by there are multiple packages for multiple things for example stdpd is one of the software for web server apache is software for again a web server okay we have nginx for again like a reverse proxy load balancing web server multiple things we can do so these multiple softwares we are placing at one general place and that general place is known as repository okay now repository must be i told you it will be your local repository or it must be on network multiple things but like uh, in your local if you want to consider your local dvd or your local iso have softwares and using that iso or using that dvd of red hat that consists of software we can configure a local repo okay how that's the mode of today but i have gonna give you extra idea of networking setup of repo like on repo somewhere like if you know ftp server so that ftp server we can put all our softwares and that ftp server we can make that ftp server the yum server and using that yum server we can configure the network yum repo how i gonna show it to you not today the whole demo when we are discussing ftp that time I, I can show you but how you can leverage this power i gonna show you today Second, repo or repository is a general place to place your software. That means .rpm files. Correct? Because the .rpm file is the software in the Red Hat. Now, let's move to the system and see how we can configure the yum repository. If I do now yum repo list. So, repo list is a command of a yum. We are going to see multiple commands of yum. But the repo list is one of the command that will list all the repos and somewhere if you see yarn is coming some names are coming and here some description is coming how we can set up this uh, repository we're gonna see but now to focus here 203 softwares only are available okay now to configure a repo you need to keep two things in mind that etc okay this is the directory this is a directory to always configure your yum it's a prerequisite you can think of from the linux it's a prerequisite it's hard coded not hard coded i can tell you which file from which file we are reading this but yeah you can think of it's a prerequisite or it's like hard coded if you want to create some repository this is a directory you have to go and inside the directory if you want to create some repo you need to create some file with extension dot repo this is mandatory you can think of now why it's mandatory yum is again like a server where you can place multiple softwares and every server have some files if i show you that file in the down it's written put your repos here or in separate files name file dot repo that means you have to create some files with the extension dot repo first thing where in this directory 
this is a prerequisite you can change this also but yeah by default it's that now let's move cd etc yum dot repos dot d i am in this folder you can see and here i need to create a file with extension dot repo multiple files are created here do you no need to focus on those files so we are creating a new file called vi red hat let's say red hat dot repo okay so no not this one this is a very generic file that already created but i am gonna give a name of file it's a file name you can give anything like dvd dot okay now to configure a repo there are multiple columns or multiple rows that you need to fix the very first column you have to give is id id of that repo so it's like your student or your employee id so name may be same but id must be unique always so you can't give a same id to multiple repository you are configuring now what is the use of this employee id to identify employee specifically basically now the here the use of id of this giving uh, like what is the id we are giving to the repo the use of this id is to identify a repo okay uniquely first thing second thing the second argument you can pass in any file or the file with the extension dot repo that means if you are configuring some yum repository you need to create a file with extension dot repo where i already told you the location etc yum dot repos dot d so in dot repo you can pass multiple arguments first of the argument is id and you have to pass always this in square brackets why square brackets because there are multiple arguments and to identify or to separate id with another arguments you have to give id in square brackets first thing now another argument you can give in any dot repo file means any repository file is name name is like the name of a repo but you can think of like a description of a repo third very important thing we have is base url okay base url is a location of a repository where your softwares are available basically in our location now in the first case we have a local repo and the local repo means where we have software available in our iso or in our dvd and in the last to last video i discuss you mount command that video is very important you can watch that video out why because in that video i told you directly we can't access the devices maybe that is a hard drive or that is a pen drive or that is a iso or dvd device to access those we have to mount that on some folder because as a human we can only access file or a folder first thing so in our gui repo when we are installing the red hat system and when we are booting a system the red hat os what it will do is it will automatically mount our dvd on some folder now you also know or if you don't know you can watch my df tutorial command command tutorial using this command we can see which device basically which block device is mounted on which folder and block device you all know if you don't know you can watch my storage type video i explained you the types of storage but in general block storage is a storage where, where we can like uh, create a partition so in iso device we already created a partition that means we can see by df command like where the thing is mounted but let's first give the id i'm giving id of dvd the name i want to give okay so what i'm name i am giving is this is my local repo z3 okay and i'm just for a location i'm saving this file and i'm doing this so in the down you can see this is my dvd and that is mounted on this folder okay let me copy it i copied and go to again this now in the base url you need to focus one more thing what is that thing let me first paste that out i am giving some protocol here you, in the base url you have to always give some protocol the, the basically the syntax of base url is like yeah focus here guys why because i am saying here you will know how to set up a network repo also and how to set up a local repo so that's why just focus here okay the base url is argument that we can pass in any dot repo file that means when we are configuring repo so what you have to give is you have to give protocol and colon this then the path of the repository if you know http is again a protocol we have to give like a domain name here so this double slash here double slash colon colon protocol name protocol name and the domain similarly we have to give path now we are setting up a local repository there is one protocol called file protocol that means search locally in the files only and for protocol we have to pass this double slash to differentiate the path and the protocol then the whole path if you want to set up a network repo like ftp server your software plays here so how you can give the network repo path here is ftp colon slash slash then the ftp server path 
so that's how you can set up a network repo even though you can give http colon slash slash and the server path or the repo path that's how you can create the network repo but as of now i'm giving file colon slash slash this is like protocol which protocol i'm using so file colon slash slash now there are third slash that belongs not to this protocol this is the third slash belongs to the whole path if i show you what does it means is see this is a slash okay the another next thing you want to understand in this configuration is we have some spaces here see we have some space in 7.5 and this between okay now to show you the demo of this what i can do is let me save this file and let me go to the, my location and i am just for the sake i am creating one folder and to show you ls nothing is here now if i want to create the folder name shri folder now you will see a very important difference the two folders are created but i don't want to create these two folders my motto is to create a folder with this one single name but in linux if there is a space between two things those will be considered as a separated let's say i am creating this mkdir file or folder one name folder two name if this space it will consider as a separator okay that means these are two different words in the terminal according to the linux for us it's a single word but for linux os it's a different words same if you give the path and in the path if this path one and path two for us it's a very single path we don't have like two paths but there is a space so according to linux or routing system these are two paths and you can't pass two paths in one base url so how we can clear, uh, how we can use this let me first remove this two folders to show you okay those are removed now if you want to create a folder with the same name how we can do this and forward slash you can give then space and this if you do now it's a one folder only these are not two folder if you see the difference here there is one space because we want to give one space in between here there are two spaces so that's the difference now let's move to the location again okay let me open that how i can do is i am giving this forward slash here okay the next argument we have is gpg check is equals to 0 now what is the use of this let me tell you but before that i want to save this file i want to do yum repo list to show you see something is going on and if you see this is my local repository this description come up this is the id to identify a repo very uniquely and now we have from 202 to 5302 software now what is the use of the gpg check gpt check is works on some algorithm or some hashing or encryption basically and we have possible two values here 0 and 1 if you give 0 that means don't check something if you give 1 check something now what is the check to check the integrity of software integrity of software now what does it mean by integrity of software here in the local repository we know we are configuring the software from local iso or the dvd that is officially or there is a part of reddit that means this iso we can trust because it's from officially a reddit how we can trust because the software inside this iso or dvd are all security tested we can trust that okay we can trust like all the things are checked and then we got final software from reddit because it's official iso or dvd from reddit that means there is no chance of security breach so these are security trusted so we we can keep it gpg check equals to 0 if we are configuring local repository with this iso device or dvd because we already know this this is official iso and there is no security breach so no need to check the integrity of software present in this iso but you can set up your own yum servers also and in that yum server you can place the software don't know and the goal knows only that if the software present in this repository or in this location created by somebody xyz person maybe that person is hacker he wants to hack your system so what is the software we don't know whether the security trusted or security checked or not so to check the integrity of the software inside that location integrity means we want to check that software belongs officially from reddit or not or that software is security tested or not so this kind of integrity we want to check we can have to pass gpg check equals to 1 and to check the integrity of software we have to follow one method that is called key method so every software in that repository is tagged or encrypted or hashed with some algorithm you can think of like this and like you can think of like some private key with that private key that software is hashed and only that private key is authorized with one public key so in that public key you have to pass your public key and if that public key hash and that private key hash are match 
that means that software is authenticated and that software is security tested there is no breaches so how we can do that for that let's move and let me show it to you we can put gpg check equals to 1 and if we put gpg check equals to 1 we have to pass one more argument that is gpg key that gpg key is a part to public key that public key will use by the software or by this yaml repository or by the os to check the integrity of software present where presented and this location now it's local location but at the network location you can also give some network location and gpg key in the red hat to find gpg key we have a path called etc pki yeah pki then we have i guess rpm something like that let me check yeah we have rpm gpg correct and ls if we do so this is a path if we copy this path let me copy this path very quickly and let me go to the okay dvd.repo and here i am pasting this path but i need the name of the key so this is the name of the key this is a public key basically and again i am going to my location at the place last i am giving this this and if i save and try to do yum repo list same software and some configuration error what it saying is url must be file or http is not this double quotes okay now what it saying is url must be http ftp file or uh, not the double quotes where we given double quotes we not given in double quotes maybe we have to give double quotes here like this so i am not use this much because gpg check will always work because we have to always do a poc and other thing okay file colon slash maybe we have to give a single quote like this <clears throat> so something is uh, like you can check that out uh, i'm not giving the much time on this because i don't want to keep the video long but what you can do you can check on the uh, like reddit official site how to give that gpg key path i already told you the path second thing i want to tell you the next argument we have is enable so if i put it like one now what does it will affect let's check no changes nothing but what if i put it like zero by default it's one if we pass this argument or not it's the value of this is one by default now you can see again 203 that doesn't means we don't have that file we have that file see and again if i put it one as the name suggests and you understand directly by the name enable or not you want to enable that repository or not then you have to give that argument enable equals to zero or one so that's basically all about this video and how to set up the yum repository locally in network i already given you the idea how what is the meaning of spaces in between the path how you can resolve that issue i even explain you with a demo also by creating the folder with two names so if there is a space between them it will treat it as two folders or two folder name or two paths if you want to keep them as the same but with spaces then you have to use as the backward slash how you can set up a network repository local repository everything every argument i explain you in detail so if you like the video subscribe the channel hit the bell icon hit the like hit the like button and if you have any doubts you can reach out to me on linkedin or you can post your doubts in comment box thanks for watching the video